good afternoon my pack it is thanksgiving day so um someone might come up to the window i don't know but um i am picking up thanksgiving dinner at cracker barrel i will go into all that in a moment so let's go ahead and go with why is it thanksgiving i'm just now posting when i got my computer back before for Halloween. I'm going to skip a lot of stuff. Um, I'm going to skip everything with the computer. I'm going to skip everything with my garage door. I'm even going to skip the fact that my car battery died and I had to get a new car battery. So let's skip the entire um, week of Halloween and just start with November 2nd. So November 2nd, my mom's partner and the cast of this whole entire story is going to be my mom, me, my mom's partner, who is her boyfriend of 22 years, and my brother. So, my mom's partner had to go and go to lunch with his work. And unfortunately, while he was um, having lunch with his former colleagues, they're all retired now, my mom fell. And when she fell, she hit her head on the laundry room door. Thankfully, the laundry room door was open or she would have hit her head on the corner of the wall. When mom fell, I went over to help her and I asked her if she was all right. She said she fell down and hurt herself. I asked her if she needed ice and right then her eyes just went dark. Everything left her soul. She didn't even breathe for 20 to 40 seconds. I was freaking out. I started screaming for my mom and then all of a sudden she's like ice and I'm like okay she's breathing so I'm like well I'm calling 911 she's like no why are you calling 911 I'm like lady you lost consciousness for 20 to 40 seconds I'm calling 911 so the paramedics came and they took mom with the lights and sirens toward the neighborhood to the hospital fortunately the only thing that they think happened is a broken right humerus. There we well, go. Oh, yep. Yeah. Thank you so like, much. Forgot what car. <laughs> it's okay. Right. Thank you so much. Hold on one second. Why? Make sure this is all flat and everything. Everything is good and dandy and all that. Okay. I'm going to give you a spoiler. Yes, I am still carnivore. Yes, I'm still eating carnivore. No, I'm not eating carnivore Thanksgiving dinner. Just got that out of the way. I'm doing traditional Thanksgiving dinner with the family. We'll get to everything and why in just a moment. So, I'm waiting to pull out. Aw, that's cool. George Trevor's getting traditional Thanksgiving dinner too. Um, so here is all the joys of what happened, if you even can call it a joy of all that happened. So when they got to the hospital, they did a bunch of x-rays and CT scan. They're claiming no issues beyond a broken right humerus i'm not 100 sure i believe that but okay groovy so then what happened because this is all a bunch of joy and then what happened is that we started working on getting mom's surgery moved up and from the surgeon we basically got a very polite but very firm um, we have to coordinate the schedule of two surgeons, so getting your mother's surgery moved up is not going to happen, and I can't see past the car next to me. Go figure when I have to turn right. But it is what it is. Oh, there we go. So basically, they very politely but very firmly said, no, we can't move the surgery date up. Um, so then... We were kind of at a loss of what to do, and we decided to start looking at surgeons outside of um, outside of the group that we 
you found this neurosurgeon out of because mom had her test at one hospital and they have their own medical group, but we have lots of hospitals in the area and each hospital has their own medical group. So we started looking around. We couldn't really find too many in the medical groups that mom's primary was from or her partner's primary was from. So we started looking at the medical group my primary was from and we found a bunch of neurosurgeons. So I'm like, let me call neurosurgery and see what I can find out. And so when I called, they basically said, we are all booked up until January with neurosurgery appointments, except for November 10th. I said, we'll take it. So we got the one appointment on November 10th, got mom there, met with a neurosurgeon who basically was like, look, I'm gonna tell you guys right now, you're very lucky. I'm not new to neurosurgery, but I'm new to this practice because I just moved here from Texas. But, you know, this is how many I've personally done. Any neurosurgeon knows how to do this surgery. Any neurosurgical specialty, even though mine is spine, all of us know how to do this. All of us have done hundreds of thousands of these surgeries. And he really put my mom's mind at ease. And I said, Mom, do you feel comfortable with them? Mom's like, yeah. So I asked mom's partner, do you feel comfortable with them? He's like, yeah. I'm like, groovy. I feel comfortable with him. I, we said, what's the next steps? And he says, I would like to get your mom in for this surgery before Christmas. I'm shooting for December 13th, but definitely before Christmas. I said, that would be fantastic. He's like, groovy. I'll get on that. And the surgical scheduler, scheduler will call you and confirm um, the exact date. So I was like, that is absolutely fantastic. Thank you so much. And he's like, no problem. He goes, we need to get this surgery redone for your mom. So they went ahead and did that. And we got home and I, mom's partner said the one thing we didn't really want to hear, which is, you know, I'm not feeling so hot today. Um, in fact, I think I have a fever. And we're like, whew, okay. And I'm like thinking, oh, this is not gonna be good. So that weekend I was um, going home, doing what I had to do, coming back, staying overnight with my mom, going home, doing what I had to do, coming back, staying the night with mom. Then Sunday, her partner was like, I should go to immediate care because I'm not feeling any better. In fact, I'm actually feeling worse. And I'm like, okay, yeah, you go ahead and do that. Make sure you feel better, etc. So he went to immediate care, came back, and I just saw on his face the, you're not going to like this. And I'm like, oh, no, what's going on? And he said, it's COVID-19. And he showed me the test results. I'm like, oh, oh wonderful. He's like, yeah, I know. I got to go pick up my medicine from the pharmacy so I can start it tonight um but he's like I'm gonna need you to wash mom I'm like okay so we really didn't have a choice I started watching mom on Sunday one of her partner's friends came and stayed with my mom for about two hours so I could go pack up some stuff and take Jasper to the pet hotel Sunday night I lost my voice Monday I started having a sore throat and headaches and then I spiked a fever. I went Monday night to get tested. And while the rapid came back negative, he's like, I'm gonna start you on the COVID medication because I'm almost certain you're going to test positive in the next 48 hours. I'm like, all right. So I went home, told mom's partner what was going on, mom what was going on. I was gonna have to be masked. I had the lightest of the symptoms of all of us, um, meaning me and her partner. So I was going to have to still stay and take care of mom with COVID and pray that mom didn't get COVID. Spoiler alert, mom got COVID. Mom and I got very lucky. We have very mild, we had very mild cases. Both of us are done with our medication. I'm back to testing negative. Mom's back to testing negative. Um, and her partner 
who had the more severe case of all of us, he's starting to feel better. So that's good. Um, and he is done with his medication as well. Now, we're going to fast forward to Wednesday. Wednesday afternoon, I was not doing well. I called my brother. I'm like, I'm hyperventilating. I can't handle this. Mom keeps getting up every two seconds. And she said the wrong thing and said we had a choice because we got in a fight the night before about it. And so he called and he's like, Mom, you were supposed to not get up but once every 15 minutes. She's like, I didn't agree to that. I'm like, do you see why I'm going? And he's like, okay, breathe. And he was like, you need to concentrate on breathing. Mom, you're not helping. So he texts mom's partner and said, hey, you need to go help Trisha out because she can't do this too much longer. We've already had her there way too long handling this way too long by herself. We know with Trisha's mental health situation and with the fact that mom looked for reasons to get up, that is not a good combination to be having Trisha handling all the care for this many days in a row. So her partner came over. It was like, I'm going to get your mom tested um, at convenient care. He goes, you go home. You relax for a couple of days. We're good to go. I have this. I'm like, thank you so much. He's like, no problem. You can tell by that smile, something more is coming. So then, fast forward to Thursday night, I get a call from my brother and he's like, hey, how are you doing? I'm like, I'm doing a little bit better. I'm on the medication. I'm like, what's up? And he's like, hey, um, we have to call 911 for mom. I go, excuse me, what? He's like, we have to call 911 for mom. I'm like, what's going on with mom? He's like, Mom's partner tried getting her up to go to the bedside mode. He had a very difficult time getting mom to stand up. When he finally did get mom standing up, mom can't move her feet or legs to get over to the commode. And I'm like, oh. he was like, I know, but we got caught on one and we have to get mom to the hospital because you guys aren't gonna be able to take care of her in this condition. I'm like, I know. So I went over to mom's house. We called 911. The paramedics that came out this time were not as good as the time when my mom broke her arm. Because the paramedics, when my mom broke her arm, she was like, I'm not sure I want to go to the hospital. And she asked them for the pros and cons. And they're like, well, honey, they're going to check out your arm. And there's no real cons to go into the hospital. I mean, you're going to get your arm checked out. That's really important. I would go if I were you. And so they were able to get her to be like, oh, okay. This paramedic that came in was not going to have that. He was just like, do you want to go to the hospital? She's like, I don't really think so. And he was like, okay, get off for me. And I'm like, wait. And he looked at me and I'm like, the power of attorney, medical and legal, wants her to go. He's like, well, if she's able to talk to me and tell me she doesn't want to go, I'm not going to force her to go. And I'm like, and I kind of gave him a look that goes, I'm about ready to go Karen on you. And he gave me a look that said, don't you even try it? Because I'll walk her out that door and you'll get no help. And then mom went, well, I don't even know why, why I'm here. And I'm like, why you're where, Mom? And she goes, I don't know. And the paramedic's like, right, now I can take her, whether she wants to go or not. I'm like, mm. I'm trying to tell you. Mom got another lights and sirens to the hospital, to the hospital on Thursday. Luckily, they listened to whatever my mom's partner said, and they admitted her. They ran some tests, and, um, she came back with a UTI. She has COVID. She has a normal pressure hydrocephalus. Yay! Um, and so they made a mom. So they had her Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday doesn't count because you know they nothing moves on Saturday, Sunday. Sunday, my brother looked at my brother and my mom's partner looked at some of the. Um, skilled nursing facilities 
and then on Tuesday they looked at a couple other ones. I'm, I'm sorry, Monday they looked at a couple, another, a couple other ones. Monday afternoon they met with the um, case manager, told them what our top two skilled nursing facilities were, and they transferred mom to our second choice on um, Tuesday evening. And just because it was our second choice doesn't mean it's bad. It was our second choice only because it was a more hospital setting instead of a more like hotel-like setting. But this place has been really good for mom. Really, really good for mom. So mom's been here since Tuesday afternoon, which is why we're like, we want to keep things normal for mom. So any special diets be darned we're going to have a traditional Thanksgiving with mom. So that's why we have traditional Thanksgiving from Cracker Barrel and I will eat the carbs happily to have a normal traditional Thanksgiving with um, good thoughts and energy for mom. So that is what we are about to do. I'm bringing her her Thanksgiving dinner and we will talk about diet and all that on my way out of here. But for now, I'll see you guys later. Bye for now. Okay, I am back making sure that there aren't any family running around because it is busy today with Thanksgiving. So, we are done with dinner. Mom is going to take a nap. So, yes, that is what is right now. Um, kind of dictating our schedule, dictating what's going on. The fact that mom is in skilled nursing for right now until her surgery. And then she'll come either back here, which we're hoping she'll come back here. If she doesn't come back here, she'll go to a different skilled nursing as directed by her neurosurgeon, but we're kind of hoping she'll come back here since she will already be here and it'll only be two days, she'll, she'll still have her same room. But she will um, go back to skilled nursing after the surgery for her either a couple weeks, a couple months, we don't know. It depends on how she heals, her balance, her strength, and all of that. So, that is the plan. Now, let's talk about carnivore. So, I've already told you, I didn't do carnivore today. Well, tonight. For Thanksgiving. And with my mom's memory and with my mom's thought process and everything like that, it comes down to, and with my mom's health, it comes down to we don't ha know how many Thanksgivings and Christmases we have left with mom. So if it's going to come down to enjoying Thanksgiving and eating the Thanksgiving meal or sticking to carnivore and having mom confused and wondering why we're eating a bunch of different meals for different people, eat the Thanksgiving dinner eat the Christmas dinner. One meal is not going to kill your entire diet. So eat the meal. Have the memories with your family. So that's what I did today. Um, but overall, since February 18th, I've lost 56 pounds. Um, one of the things I said in my July video, one of my July videos while walking around the dog park and it blurted out before I even thought about what I said. I was talking about my A1C and my A1C had gone down to 6.0 from 6.5 and I got so stoked that before I even thought about it, I blurted out the words, I bet my A1C will be down be, um, to 5.7 by 4 December 2nd or I will eat liver on camera. As soon as those words left my mouth, I went, what the heck did I just say? 
well. My A1C is down to 5.7 and it's no and it's been down since the beginning of November. So I'm sorry, no liver on camera. My iron levels have improved. My vitamin D levels have improved. I've reversed type 2 diabetes. I feel better. I have more energy. I feel great. So yeah, carnivore's really working for me. Um, I do have coming up two videos I want to do. One is my tips for transitioning to carnivore. And then the other one is um, come prep with me monthly raw feeding for a raw carnivore dog. So I will be doing both those videos. I don't know the exact time frame. Um, the raw feeding one I may do in December. I may do in January. I may do in February. I don't know. It depends on how all this craziness goes with my mom. But I will be filming that. And I will also be filming the other one sometime between now and January. For the next year, I'm keeping it simple. Primarily carnivore. The exceptions I'm allowing are today, which is Thanksgiving and Christmas, but pretty much until November of 2024, keep it as carnivore as possible. I'm not putting any crazy restrictions on it. If it's carnivore, it's allowed. Um, naturally, I've started eliminating a few things. Um, for the last couple of months, it's been um, only heavy cream in my coffee, not the sugar-free syrup and the um, sugar substitutes I've been getting have been this little bit of stevia that's in the flavored element. So that doesn't bother me. Um, I've naturally been going more towards salt for seasoning, but um, I'm not saying that, you know, clean seasonings are not allowed if there's clean seasonings or even seasonings with soy oil, as long as it does not have sugars in it. I'm not going to be all like, oh, I'm not going to eat at this restaurant because they use garlic powder or they use whatever. But primarily for myself, I'm keeping it clean and salt is pretty much all I use at home. Um, as far as dairy goes, I mean, I still eat cheese, um, heavy cream in my coffee, so that's not something I'm going to be overly concerned about. And, you know, just day by day, go through and, you know, do what I gotta do. Now, one thing I did join as far as a challenge goes, and it's not one of these lion diet or triple B and E, it's just a general, um, see how much weight we can lose as a channel six week diet challenge from um, Carnivore Quest and just how much weight we can lose in six weeks as a channel. So um, I'm doing that and then they also you can have a bonus point per day for like let's say you want to go I want to cut out coffee so every day that you cut out coffee you give yourself a point or let's say you say I want to exercise every day so every day you exercise for the six weeks you give yourself one point for me and I have not started it yet I probably won't start until this Monday so I'm gonna be a week behind on the points and everything because it started this past Monday is um, I want to start my morning off with a combination of yoga and meditation an hour to start the morning off with whether it's 30 and 30 15 and 45 um, I just want to start each morning with um, an hour total of yoga and meditation to just kind of start out in a calm manner in a calm space so that's something I'm doing but that's pretty much what I'm doing and you know it's working out I may film some what am I eating 
videos because now there's just general carnivore it might be a little bit more interesting what I will definitely film and it will be a short is what am I packing to eat at the hospital for when my mom goes into surgery because I do have a soft site cooler with um, freezer packs to or I, freezer ice pack to put in there to keep the food cold and so then I can go buy what I'm eating at the hospital so I will film that and do that anyway I'm gonna leave you here because I'm almost home and this is pretty much my video for the day so if you like the video give it a thumbs up if you haven't joined my pack already go ahead and hit subscribe hit the bell notification so you know when I upload next comments keep them polite keep them respectful you don't have to agree with what we say but you do have to be respectful of it and I will see you in the next video bye